You can't miss this one today as we are reanimating multiple creatures from either graveyard each turn while swarming our opponents with oozes. This bombardment deck is totally busted. Hey everyone, Hex here, and today we're leveraging the unique double hybrid split cards for some bonkers turns, killing our opponents with their own creatures, all whilst making oozes left, right, and center. How so? Well, we're building the deck around Arcane Bombardment, my favorite six mana enchantment. It allows you to cast spells for free each turn once they've been exiled under it. You exile an instant or sorcery from your grave whenever you cast your first one each turn, and then you get to play all the spells exiled this way for free. So firstly, the Ooze plan. Slime Against Humanity is a three cost sorcery that says create a 0-0 Ooze with Trample, then put X plus one plus one counters on it where X is two, plus the total number of cards you have in exile or in your graveyard named Slime Against Humanity, and you get to have as many copies in your deck as you wish. Well, today we have eight, and what's great here is that Arcane Bobarban indeed puts them in exile, so you will never lose out on the value here. A couple of these under your enchantment, and your oozes will get out of hand very quickly. Our other plan, which I just can't get enough of today, is with the new double split cards for Murders at Carl of Mana. In your graveyard or exile, they're either spell, meaning you can cast the cheap side early on, have the card exiled under Bombardment, then you get to cast the expensive side later on, every turn for free. So firstly, we've got Flotsam Jetsam. Flotsam is a two mana instant that mills three and investigates. It's pretty good in our deck as we get to play on our opponent's turn to trigger the Bombardment, but Jetsam is where things get spicy. Each opponent mills three, then you get to cast a spell from their graveyard without paying its cost. It's just too good in our deck, especially if Jetsam is being cast each turn for free from our Bombardment. The other card is Push Pull. Push is a two mana sorcery that destroys a target tapped creature, but similarly to the other card, it's six mana right hand side is where all the action at. This one is called Pull. It puts two target creatures from any graveyard onto the battlefield under your control with haste and they sacrifice at the end of turn. They don't even exile, meaning this is so repeatable if you've set up the board correctly. I'm just so impressed with how effective these cards work with Arcane Bombardment. The rest of the deck is typical with Big Score, Brotherhood's End and Burn Down the House to keep the board as clear as possible whilst drawing and getting you to Arcane Bombardment quickly. We've got Play With Fire and Bitter Triumph in our arsenal, always ready to trigger Bombardment at a moment's notice. I've got 26 lands and that's the deck. Let me repeat, this deck is bonkers when it pops off. Whether it's with a slimy ooze army or stealing your opponent's best creatures, this deck is so much fun to play. The split cards are totally viable too as six mana spells without bombardment and this deck thrives if your opponent is just packing a lot of one on one removal. But enough from me, I want to hear your thoughts on this deck and what's your favourite card from Carl of Mana? Drop them in the comments below and don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Give us a like because your support means the world to this channel and I'll catch you again in the next video. All right, on the draw here, and yeah, we'll keep this one. We have our Bombardment. We also have one of the new double face cards, or the double split cards in Push and Pull. Push, destroying a target tap creature, and Pull, popping two creatures from your opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield. We don't have any creatures in our deck, so we'll never be targeting ours. But it looks like the opponent's on Jund 2. So we'll see how this one goes. Preacher of the Schism, okay. Well, we'll better triumph that, get that off the battlefield now whilst we have the opportunity. We're just going to try and control the board as long as possible until we get to six mana to drop one of our bombardments. Um, yeah, so hardest thing, in the, hardest thing in the deck is getting bombardment. But we have two of them in our hands. Opponent names Human with their Cavern of Souls and they just pass the turn. And this is fine for us if they're just going to play slow like this. But gives us a chance to play another new card in Slime Against Humanity. It's going to make a 2-2 Slime. And what's great with this sorcery is if you do manage to get it underneath Bombardment, you don't lose out on any value because it is a it is in Exile. And the sorcery specifically says if a card's in Exile or Graveyard. It doesn't matter anyway as our 2-2 on the battlefield is going to get Infernal Grasped. And uh, yeah, we could play with Fire this Druid, but... It's going to go to face as I'm looking for land. Okay, well, we'll find one anyway. So once we get to six mana, I think we're going to be okay as long as the opponent doesn't have any enchantments. Another preacher here. 
does start building up this questing druid. And untapped land is bombardment. So we can start popping off next turn. Unfortunately, there is four toughness on this preacher. And we'll see how this one goes. We have a slime, bittery, um, bitter triumph, and play with fire in our graveyard. So I'm going to go for Brotherhood's End. The chances of us hitting one of our removal spells in our grave are pretty high. As long as we don't hit the slime here. Okay, well, we do. So we do lose our slime, but... We're not going to be dying anytime soon. I think I'm just going to kill this preacher whilst I have the opportunity. Although this doesn't trigger the bombardment a second time this turn. I think we're in a pretty good place because we can just keep casting slimes now. And a burn down the house is what we like to see. But We'll pop this slime against humanity on the battlefield. We get another one from underneath bombardment. And we get pull here. So we get to bring two creatures from the graveyards onto the battlefield. We'll take these creatures. As mentioned before the games, uh, they don't even exile. I would have thought a card like this would exile them, but... With push and pull being underneath bombardment, every single instant of sorcery now is just going to bring those two cards back from the graveyard. So there's no way we lose this game, is there? We can just burn down the house next turn. And attack our opponent with a load of creatures. Deadly cover up here to destroy all creatures. And if they've collected evidence six, they get to exile a card from our graveyard. Search our uh, library hand and graveyard for any number of those cards and exile them as well. They exile slime against humanity, which is absolutely fine for us. <laughs> so we find um, Jetsam. So we'll play that. That triggers Arcane Bombardment. And I guess we will play Paul. We've got another slime. So the slime here is a 10-10 as they decided to exile all of our slimes. Um, pull that questing druid back onto the battlefield. Jetsam here. Let's take Breach the Multiverse. And yeah, I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> Opponent can't keep up with that one and they scoop it up. All right then, on the draw, and we have the most Jundi hand at the moment and there is arcane bomb moment all right so i absolutely love our hand what's great with bitter triumph and play with fire is their instance to trigger the bombardment on our opponent's turns but there's no way we're not going to be able to gonna not to use those now so we'll take care of the naturalist something to think about in this game i guess will be the day night cycle and big score is a decent card i kind of like that one fixes our hand kind of ramps us and I would like to turn it to daytime at some point. Went with a, a Stormseeker. It comes down as a Slasher. So it's five damage to us. And uh, we find a big score. So we're not doing too bad. We just got to stay alive. Guess Brotherhood's End isn't particularly good against their um, creature right now. Going to Bitter Triumph this when I get a chance. But I really want them to double spell. Uh, Pack Song Pup. Okay, well. I don't want them to give that haste, so let's uh, get rid of their 3-4. I'm actually going to take 3 damage to do that. Although it puts us to 12, I really like my hand. Hopefully they play another spell here. But Paxong Pup is fine on the battlefield. Okay, will we find a, another land, which is good. And I'm going to big score now in case we do find a way that we want to double spell here. I guess we'll just get rid of land. We're going to get two treasures here. Another bombardment. Okay. Bombardments in multiples. Not a brilliant draw there. But we'll see because the opponent might have an opportunity to destroy ours. They're in these. They're in green, which does have effective ways to deal with enchantments. Another pup means they are now both two twos. And that is a tap land. So, unfortunately, I think I'm going to Brotherhood's End here. I would love to get the Bombardment down, but we're on 10 life. Opponent has a couple of creatures which are getting bigger. I know their deck has hasty creatures, so I think just to preserve our life total, best to do it this way. And by casting Big Score here, we get to turn it to daytime. Get rid of these cliffs, and then we'll try and set ourselves up for Bombardment next turn. Looking for a play with fire or a cheap instant. 
I guess Slime Against Humanity isn't the worst card here. Naturalist. I'm really loving this deck. I love Bombardment. I love the fact it just goes with any of the new spells from a new set. And these double double face cards are pretty nice, all these split cards. I'm not entirely sure what they're called. Double split hybrid cards, I think, is the terminology there. But yeah, we're down to eight lives, so we've just got to be mindful of that. Really want to get this Bombardment down, though. So I think we will now, and then we're just, fingers crossed, we can survive until next turn when we can play Slime Against Humanity and hopefully start popping off a little bit. Helana and Elena pumps up the Naturalist. But we're going down to four, and uh, do we survive? Yes, we do, and that's a big score, okay. Well, big score's great because it's an instant. So, Slime Against Humanity here, just a big score, okay. Get rid of the um, land we've got. Still trying to find a way here to stabilize, and we find Burn Down the House, and although I want, I don't really want to burn down the house, get rid of my ooze, I think we're going to have to do it this turn, just to get these creatures off the board. So, that was a pretty nice draw for us there. This doesn't trigger the Bombardment a second time, we've already done that. So opponent here, just with a mountain, and there is push and pull. Perfect. So let's grab this Stormseeker from the opponent's grave. Let's grab Halana and Elena. And uh, big score. Well, we'll just get rid of Arcane Bombardment here. We find events and Slime Against Humanity. And yeah, we'll just go to uh, attacks here. I have my triggers on auto, so not sure if we could have pumped up the Halana and Elena. That would have been more damage. I don't think it was. But yeah, these are not exiled, so we're just going to do the same next turn if we manage to get our spell underneath Arcane Bombardment. But big score on the opponent's end step. We'll trigger the Bombardment. Another slime against humanity. And uh, big score. I'm actually going to decline that. I like the slime that's in my hand. So every instant sorcery now is going to create a slime. Opponent with a rending flame. And one-on-one -on -one removal is not going to be too great against us. We find Flotsam Jetsam. Another amazing card here. And a push and pull. Okay, well this is fantastic. We have either cards to play here. I think we're going to go... Let's go for Paul because um, Flotsam is an instant. So we'll take the Stormseeker and the Halana and Elena again. We'll big score, and we'll just big score away the slime, I guess. Get that into the graveyard. It's fine in the graveyard. Now, a lot of stuff going on here, but ultimately we're going to get a ton of creatures in the battlefield. And... Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure everything's going to have haste, which it will. Please forgive me if I'm missing the triggers with Halana and the Stormseeker. I'm uh, pretty certain we're going to win this game. And just going through the motions a little bit. Flotsam, though, is going to trigger on our opponent's turn. But they uh, scoop it up first. All right, on the draw, with a couple of Slime Against Humanities and our push-pull. Well, I'm not going to turn down push and pull. I've been trying to make a Slime Against Humanity deck since this uh, set came out. Started off with 36 of them in a deck and then kept whittling them down until I found a nice kind of balance with other cards. So we just got eight in this deck, but you can certainly play more if you didn't want to play these split cards and you really wanted to go... Much more ooze tribal. The fact they've got trample is amazing as well. But opponent here with a bilious skull dweller. So it is a 1 1 with death touch and toxic 1. Might as well just uh, push this. It is a sorcery. And get that into our graveyard for later on. And uh, Mirex and. 
Phyrexian Sensor is actually a card that is pretty good against our deck as our creatures not only come in tapped, but we can only cast one non-Phyrexian each turn and Arcane Bombardment really wants to cast multiple spells a turn, so we're going to have to play around this sensor a little bit. First thing though is we need to find a Bombardment. And I think big score is the best way to do that. So let's pass the turn. And we will big score on this turn opponent with a Skrelf's Hive. That is fine by me. So opponent goes to attacks. We will big score here. Looking for our Bombardment. We'll drop a Humanity or a Slime Against Humanity into our graveyard. We find Brotherhood's End. I think I'm just going to cast the Brotherhood's End. Get rid of this sensor once and for all. Although they do have a virtue of persistence, so hopefully they don't get to that. And uh, we can now play an untapped slime onto the battlefield. It's a 4 4. We'll keep this bitter triumph for something a little bit more threatening with more than three toughness, maybe a bit later on. So it looks like we're up against just Phyrexians, which is fun. More slimes here. It's going to come down as a 5 5. So we're threatening the opponent's life total quite a bit. Really want to find a bombardment. And uh, yeah, we'll just pass the turn. So a couple of a couple more slimes against humanity would be fantastic draws as well as our arcane bombardment. The opponent is losing life with their scry uh, scrubs hive, but they're going to start gaining it back when they. We finally get to three poison counters. And still from existence from our opponent. Presumed it can take the 5-5, five five, which it does. And they're going to rumble with a 1-1, one one, I would presume. There it goes. Okay, we're on two toxic now. Well, there's Arcane Bombardment right on cue. So we'll play that. We'll play our forest. And then we have Bitter Triumph available to deal with any big threats from our opponent. I guess I'm uh, not going to attack. Don't really want to go down to three poison. And if I do, they're going to have to sacrifice basically one of their one ones to do that. But they managed to get their virtue down. So we're going to bitter triumph the sensor next turn when they bring that out. Because that card is going to wreck us if we're not careful. Yeah, we'll just block one of these and uh, we'll, we'll save the Bitter Triumph. I think I think um, we need to try and see this game out as quick as possible. Brotherhood's End. Okay, well. We'll destroy our... We'll destroy the opponent's creatures. I guess we could have used the artifact side there. And although we would have lost our treasure, we would have taken care of that Phyrexian Atlas from our opponent. But we are going to be making slimes every time we cast an instant or sorcery now. Phyrexian Sensor here from our opponent is back onto the battlefield, as is now an Annex Sentry. So this is a close game. This could go either way. I'm uh, glad we haven't seen anything like Shieldred or bigger threats from our opponent, but this Phyrexian Sensor is causing me a little headache here. We will shoot it. Another Atlas for our opponent. So they've got quite a lot of mana here. And they ping once we're on three poison, which we are. So we're on a bit of a clock here, actually. Let's get rid of this sensor. Although they're going to keep being able to bring it back with the virtue of persistence, I think we need to stay on top of it as much as possible. Can't play these cards because you can't play two non Phyrexian spells. And another slime against humanity is precisely what we want here. Because this card is going to trigger our bombardment, meaning we get two slime, two more slimes onto the battlefield. Two more six sixes. And they can bring back that sensor every turn now, but I'm pretty certain as long as we keep drawing spells, we're gonna be okay. Let's take the opponent down here to six if they don't block. Which they don't. But yeah, we've got to be very careful from these Phyrexian Atlases. 
And we don't have any creatures in our in our deck, so they're always going to be taken from theirs, and it's that sensor again. Oh, and a second sensor. Okay, well, they're out of cards, and we have three trampling six sixes next turn. So surely this is lethal. Uh, they're attacking with a sentry. I think they should have held that back because it has four toughness. And although they're going to gain two life here, I think they might have wanted to have the four toughness on the battlefield. It kind of gains you more life. And uh, we go down to six. We go down to five from these atlases. But we should have a lethal attack this turn with our oozes. And we draw another bombardment. Not our best draw, so I think we got there just in the nick of time here. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. What a great oozy win that one was. Alright then, on the draw with our oozy bombardment deck. Uh, opponent with a Blossom in Sands. And uh, our hand is pretty nice. Going to create a couple of oozes quite early on. And we have Brotherhood's End if we need to mop up the board. Just need an arcane bombardment here. Looks like we're up against Selesnia. Uh, could mean anything really, but we'll drop against we'll drop a slime against humanity here. Opponent doesn't have a basic, so no ossification here. They do play a loam speaker, and although Brotherhood's End could deal with the loam speaker, I think I'm going to see if they can play out their hand a little bit more. We just found. Uh, our bombardment. And we do have burned down the house, so we just got to be a little bit patient here. They do find their third mana though, so they have four mana this turn. But they play Gwenna. Okay. Two, three toughness mana dorks. I think we're definitely going to clear this board this coming turn. Just shoot in their face to try and scry to make sure we're hitting our land drops because just want to get to that six mana for the bombardment here. And it does not block. And uh, I'm going to clear the board. Could have played a Brotherhood's End there, but I like having the burn down the house in the graveyard for the bombardment. Put it with a Ren and a Realm Breaker. Makes a 3 3 and attacks us. Just a big score. Okay. All right, let's just deal with the board. I, I, I think what I should have done was played the Brotherhood's End the turn before, had um, burned down the house for this turn. Didn't know they were going to play the Planeswalker, though. But we just need, we're going to be able to rebuild pretty quickly once we manage to play Big Score and a Bombardment. <laughs> Another Bombardment. Okay, well, let's do this now. See what we draw. Actually, let's... Uh, no, let's do it now. Let's see what we draw. Bit of Triumph and Swamp. Okay. Yeah, we need 8 mana. So, play the Swamp. See if the opponent can do something this turn. They make another 3-3. Three, three. And, uh... Are they going to attack us? They do. So we could bit of triumph the Ren here, but I think we are best just waiting a second. Playing Bombardment. And we will bit of triumph Ren now, discarding this land we've got. Fingers crossed we get some juicy spell here underneath our Bombardment. Okay, opponent is in the tank a little bit here. Okay, Slime Against Humanity is fine. That means each instant sorcery is going to create at least a 4 4 now. That relic of legends for our opponent. And there is Atraxa's Fall, a pretty nice answer for our enchantment. Not everybody plays straight up enchantment removal like that. Kind of with Mirahol Mimic, our ooze, well, it dies immediately. Doesn't work the way they had hoped it to work. And I burn down the house here. It's going to make some uh, devils and attack our opponent down to one. Effectively dead unless they can exile our devils as they're going to ping the opponent when they die. 
So we kind of got there in this game, I would say, um, even though they killed our bombardment. We've just been able to beat them down with an ooze. And unless they can do 14 damage, like I said, or exile all our devils now, and our ooze token, we should be good. Right, with a still Seraph. I'm not sure that's going to cut it in this instance. He already has lifelink on attacks. And another slime against humanity. Well, we'll just attack our opponent. They can't block the 1-1s. One -ones. The 4-4 four -four has trample. Goes up to 3 with the uh, safekeeping. But yeah, we didn't really do the bombardment thing this turn, but this game, but we managed to control the game in a more in a different way. And uh, yeah, opponent eventually dies.